I'm made for more. So put up after I carry God. There's no stopping me now. I'm taking I'm made for more. I'm made for more. You dare put me down. I hope you understand the lyrics of that song. You need to understand. I hope you understand the lyrics of that song. There is no stopping you now. There is no stopping you now. There is no stopping. I'm made for more. Yes, 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 yes. I'm made for more. Supernatural things I, I carry go. There's no stopping There's me. There's no stopping me oh. now. I'm taking a show. Begin to take that to God in prayer. I come into the, the realization of the I'm things that I am made of. I have been endued, I have been rejuvenated. I carry God in abundance. I carry God in abundance. I now take nations. I now take nations. I now take nations. I conquer territories. I am no longer small. I am no longer small. Nothing defeats me again. Nothing stands in my way. I carry God. You see me, you see God. You see me, you see God. You see me, you see God. I am taking over. I'm made for more. Praying that song. Praying that song. That was a very powerful song. A very powerful song. There's no stopping me now. I'm taking the show. I'm made for more. I'm made for more. Don't you dare put me down. Pray, pray, pray. Say, Father, I come into the realities, the realities that you have for me. I come into the consciousness, into the consciousness. I take nations, things that have withstood me before now. I go back and I retake them. I reclaim the land. Nothing is too strong for me. Nothing stands in my way. Nothing, 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 nothing. There is no stopping me now. I bulldoze anything along my path. I have received a great measure. I am made for more. I am made for more. I am taking over. I am taking over. Whatever belongs to me, I take them. I come and I take them. There is no stopping me. There is no stopping me. I am taking. I am taking. Praying that song, praying that song. It needs to enter your consciousness. You are now taking over. You are made for more. You are made for more. Whatever you think you have achieved, I've come to announce. You are made for more. There is yet, there are yet many lands to be conquered. There are yet many territories to be taken. There are yet many lands, many lands, many territories to be taken. Many places to go into. I am made for more. Don't you dare put me down. I'm made for more. Who are the Philistines that are standing before me? Oh my God. What is that mountain before Zerubbabel? I am taking nations, nations. It is now a national and an international assignment. You stopped me within borders, but now I go from country to country. You cannot put me down. No, 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 no. You cannot, you cannot. I am made for more. I carry God. 
I carry go. I carry go. I yeah I carry go. I carry go. The man you are looking at is not powerless. The person you are looking at is not without substance. The person you are looking at has been endued with power. <laughs> you cross my path. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. The enemies touch you by mistake. They die by correction. I am taking over. It is a fierce and a freely mandate. In Jesus, name we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for the outpouring of your presence. For the good things you've continued to do and you will continue to do. You have shed yourself abroad and abundantly unto us. Thank you for mantles. Thank you for impartations. Thank you for the activations. And thank you for the anointings. We now walk in this consciousness that we are made for more. No man stands before us. Nothing puts us down. As we are about to hear your word this morning, we ask dear father, the entrance of your word shall give us light and understanding in the name of Jesus. Father, no man take this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was in all. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to start by commending very graciously the choir. A round of applause please for the choir. You see, without doubt, we, we know and we see that a great measure was bestowed upon the choir. Thank you very much. And I also want to thank my pastor, Pastor Tobin Nadozie, for this very rare privilege of speaking to the people of God this morning. And I also thank the church board and the pastors who have trusted me to come and pass the word of God to us. God bless you, sirs. And may the Lord bless us abundantly in the name of Jesus. This morning, we'll be looking at the topic more about the Lion of Judah. More about the Lion of Judah. We are taking our reading from the book of Revelation chapter 5. From verse 2 to verse 5. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth. Neither under the earth was able to open the book. Neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. You see, in the Bible, there are many and different metaphors that are used to describe the Lord Jesus. In some texts, he is called the rose of Sharon. In some texts, he is called the bread of life. In some passages, you find the Bible calling him the good shepherd. At other times, the Bible calls him the roots of David. And like we have seen in this scripture, the Bible calls him the lion of the tribe of Judah. And now we want to consider this morning 
more about the lion of Judah. And as I was looking at this topic, I, I decided to inquire what could be the foundation for the description used for Jesus by calling him the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let us look at the book of Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. Verse 9 and verse 10. Before we read, I will give you a little context into that scripture. Here what we see is that Jacob had called his 12 sons before his passing so that he could bless and anoint them. So son by son, as it was bestowed upon Jacob, Jacob was releasing certain pronouncements upon his sons. And when it came to the turn of Judah, Jacob says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old man who shall rouse him up. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until he come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So we see the description that Judah is like a lion's whelp. And in verse 10, it goes further to say that the scepter, the mandate of rulership, the mandate of authority shall not depart from the lineage of Judah. Now, when you come further in other scriptures, the Bible now calls Jesus the roots of David. The Bible then also promises David that his lineage, Jesus will come from his lineage. Are we together? Then additionally, now because of Genesis chapter 49 verse 10, the expression, the root of David and the lion of the tribe of Judah, because Jesus comes now comes from that tribe. If you trace the genealogy, of Jesus is from the tribe of Judah and as the king of kings and the lord of lords he has been exalted as that lion of the tribe of Judah and when you go for that to say oh the root of David we also then understand why that while that you know description is used and this morning we'll be considering who and what? What are the characteristics of the tribe, of the lion, of the tribe of Judah? The lion of Judah is Jesus himself. He is the root of David and the one who has prevailed. And he was the only one that was found worthy to open the seals and to look thereon. Now, because the Bible does not use words carelessly, and you need to understand this, you may not understand a certain context that scripture uses a word, but if you read the Bible and you see something, it may be that a revelation can come to you maybe many years later, but each of the words used in scripture were carefully designed by the Holy Spirit. To mean the things he intended them to mean. So the expression, the lion, you understand how the Bible uses it as a symbol to describe strength. So when we look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 30, the Bible says that a lion which is strongest among beasts and turn it not away for any so if you have this understanding at least on the earth of the physical characteristics of a lion it makes it brings you to the understanding that 
The way strength and courage is displayed and exhibited by a lion, if that same description is used for the Lord Jesus, we then begin to understand the strength and the courage that has been allotted to Jesus by the description used in the Bible. Now, let me say something. And I always tell people, you know, I think in the New Testament, I cannot recall the passage now. The Bible begins to say that the, I think the invisible things, they are understood by the things that are made. Are we together? The invisible things are understood by the things that are made. So you can look at certain things that have been placed in order on earth. And it begins to give you an idea or a representation of certain things you do not see with your physical eyes. Amen? So when we see that, oh, a description is used in a physical realm to explain a divine reality. It's for us to come to that understanding that the natural things can be a template to give you an insight into how things are explained or operated in the realm above. We need the Lion of Judah in this seventh month. And as we are coming to the end of the month, for the many things that we need to do on earth, we need the Lion of Judah. For the divine mandate that we have received, we need the Lion of Judah. For any achievements that must be accomplished by the gifts that have been deposited in us, we need to come to that place where we are one with the Lion of Judah. Why do we need the Lion of Judah? Why? We need the Lion of Judah, number one, to silence the noisemakers. You see, he who walks with a lion fears nothing. Fears, in fact, and I can even explain this thing to you with a dog. You must have seen people walking their dogs and just, you just cross the road. You don't want to know if it's, it doesn't bite the ogre. Don't worry. Let me just cross. You don't want to find out whether it's a pet, it doesn't bite. You're walking with a dog. Let me... So, imagine you're now walking with a lion. The lion of Judah silences the noisemakers. Let us read the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. I'll read from verse 1 to verse 3. 14 to 15, then 22 to 23. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazontama, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Verse 14 and verse 15. They had prayed now and they had fasted. And then what we see in verse 14 is what starts to happen. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hacking all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 22 and verse 23. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. 
And when they had made an end in the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. The context for this scripture is that Jehoshaphat was at the time the ruler, you know, in Israel. And, you know, as we read in scripture, nations fighting against nations, and, you know, the battle was brought to him. And the, the kings of Moab and the kings of the Ammonites had set themselves in array in a bid to come and, you know, plunder and conquer the children of Israel. And by the, con, uh, co, by the explanation we see in this scripture, by all human indices, it was clear that, you know, there was no capacity found in Jehoshaphat or the children of Israel to be able to defeat the armies of the Moabites or the Ammonites. So, humanly speaking, they were frail and weak. But Jehoshaphat understood the principle. He understood the methodology. He understood something. How to approach the holies of holies. And then he called the people together and said, Consecrate the fast. Let us seek the God. Let us seek the face of God. We read in verse 14 and 15, how God, the Spirit of the Lord, descended upon Jehaziel. And then by verse 22, the people that had set themselves in array to come against the children of Israel, in one way or the other, found that they had been silenced. The battle had now turned against them. That victory became that of the children of Israel. Why? Because Jehoshaphat understood the protocol of calling upon the lion of the tribe of Judah. So we need the lion of the tribe of Judah to silence the noise makers. No matter how much they encamp around about us. No matter how much noise they make. You see, and if we are trusting the lion of the tribe of Judah, like we learned yesterday, we must learn to obey and do as he says. Because sometimes when the, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah gives certain instructions to our human mind, it may be, you know, foolish. And I remember the case of David and Goliath. Saul and the armies of Israel had gone to the, you know, to the mountain to fight. And they had camped there for a very long time. David comes just to give and um, bring some, you know, food for the, for the men at war. And then Goliath had, you know, defying the armies of the Lord, going on and on, making all the noise in the world. But there was a young boy called David who understood the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when Goliath was speaking, you know, just saying many profane things against the children of Israel. Because David understood the protocol of entering the secret place. He understood the God he was serving. You would assume that that war would be fought, fought with bows and arrows. You would assume that that battle would be fought with the many helmets and the many shields that they came with. But he said, who is he that defied the armies of the Lord? Who is that uncircumcised Philistine? You see, in human understanding, it will look very impossible. It will look very foolish. How can a small boy David be saying these things? Don't you see Goliath? Don't you see how huge he looks? But the lion of the tribe of Judah, his operations are not that way. Because even the things of the spirit, sometimes we may not understand, but all we are called to do is to obey. And we know how that story ends. The, 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 the battle was in the favor of the children of Israel, and the Philistines were silenced. The next thing we see is that the lion of Judah, we need him to scare the enemies. To scare the enemies. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, chapter 7, verse 3 and 7, the Bible begins to record the story. You see, and, and you know, in these stories, we begin to see the many ways that the Lion of Judah brings victory to his people. We begin to understand the many ways that the Lion of the tribe of Judah does his operations. Now, there was a battle between, I think, the children of Israel and the Syrians. 
and you can imagine how God brought victory to the children of Israel. Was that there, was, there were four lepers, four. And they had just thought to themselves, you know, why do we stay here and just die, you know? Let's just even go and see what's going to happen. How, what did the lion of the tribe of Judah do? With four lepers, he was able to occasion an operation that scared the armies of the Syrians without a battle. So if we, if we understand the lion of the tribe of Judah, we'll come to a place where we totally submit and surrender to him. We need the lion of the tribe of Judah to sensitize the people that he is with us, to subdue the evil people plotting against us, to speak with authority which cannot be questioned, to settle every dust that is raised against us. We'll be considering this topic in three subheadings. Point number one, the legendary lion, he is alive. Number two, the lordly lion, he is able. Number three, the liberating lion, he will avenge. Point number one, the legendary lion, he is alive. We are looking at the living lion that gives life. In the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The living lion is also life. The living lion gives life. The living lion, because he is living, all about him is life. In fact, he is life himself. The very existence of you and I is occasioned by the living lion. You understand that even the breath, you know, we take every day was occasions that life is from the living lion. And for anyone here that has anything dead in them, anything dead in their spirit, anything dead in their body, I bring to you the living lion. The living lion that gives life, that will bring life to you. And whatever it, that is dead in your life will live again in the name of Jesus. We see the living lion that shows love. In John chapter 13 verse 1. John chapter 13 verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover. When Jesus knew that his hour was come. That he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own. Which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. You know there is an assurance we have from this scripture. And maybe many of us will not see it. And it looks so simple, yet very profound. That having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So he loves me unto the end. He loves you unto the end. His love never fails. It never quenches. It is never stopped. No matter what I am going through, there is the living lion that loves. No matter what I am passing through, this is the great assurance and confidence that I have. That the living lion loves me even unto the end. And that is why we see in scripture that there were people like Job that was he was passing through many many afflictions but because he understood the living lion that loved him he said even though he slay me yet will i trust him it doesn't matter what i am going through i am very confident i am very assured in this reality that there is a living lion that loves me even to the end and even if on my deathbed i do not see the signs even if on my deathbed, it looks like the prayers are not being answered. It still does not shift my resolution that 
the living lion loves me to the very end. We have the living lion that gives liberation. John chapter 8 verse 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You see, a lot of times when we read these scriptures is so that we can collectively come to a consciousness. And this scripture, you know, if you've been in the church long enough, there are chances that you would have come across the scripture. But has the revelation contained in this scripture been made alive to you? That if the son therefore makes me free, I shall be free indeed. Indeed, without doubt. Without doubting. No matter what the enemy tries to say. You see, there are many times that God will have given us the things that we have been asking him for. There are many times that God will have delivered unto us the very substances of the things we've been praying for. But because we, we, are, we have not come to a consciousness where we believe scripture and believe it unto the end, the devil comes to play some tricks. You know, he brings his antics. You know, are you sure? Do you think? Don't you see? You know, all those very subtle questions. The assurance that I have, the assurance that you should have, is that if the Son makes me free, I shall be free indeed. Indeed, in our, in our context, is like actually, actually, like truly, truly, I am free. Indeed. And th this is occasioned by the living lion that gives liberation. Point number two, we see the lordly lion, he is able. The lordly lion, he is able. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion. The lordly lion, he is able. Revelation chapter 5, from verse 2 to verse 5. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. There seems to be an irony in this scripture and I will point it out. And if we understand the irony, you begin to realize, you know, what is captured in this verse. A strong man that has a loud voice. Is asking people who is worthy to open a book and lose the seals. Are we together? A strong angel, an angel of strength that has maybe a baritone voice that possibly thunders in the heavens. <laughs> is asking who is worthy. To lose, let's uh, uh, to lose the seal, to open a book and to lose the seals. Who is worthy? If you are asking that question, it it is it is let me say self-incriminating in the sense that you have already disqualified yourself. Because it, I have come to the realization that I can't do this, so I need to ask who is worthy. Because I am not worthy. As the angel, I am not worthy. And even in my strength, I am not strong enough. <laughs> Verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, 
neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon. Let us stop here. You know, the Bible ensured that this verse captures all the realms in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. So that you don't assume that, okay, you people did not check the earth. Maybe you would have found somebody. You don't also assume that maybe under the earth, maybe there might have been someone worthy to do it. No man. The first thing we see is that an angel of strength and power has pronounced that question. And by asking that question, the implication is that he himself was unable to do it. And then we now leave the heavens. After checking the heavens, we come to earth and we go under the earth. And we still find that no man Remember, remember that this is a cry. This is a cry. This is like a cry. Like we are in trouble. Who can do this? Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Even the heavenly beings are we together? Even the heavenly beings, no man was found worthy. You are not qualified, no one was qualified enough to do this. Verse 5 And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Hail, hail, lion of... We see the authority of our lion. The authority of our lion. Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 to 29. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Who would you rather have as the person supervising the interests in your life? Again, if you read this, this verse, the scripture tells us something, although it's not written. It says, he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. We now know that the scribes did not have authority. Are we together? Am I, do you agree? He taught them as one, this, one having authority. This, what these scribes have been doing since, I don't understand it. So we have the authority of our lion. And what is more, the person you need in your life is the lion that has the authority. We see the audacity of our lion. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He has the authority, he has the audacity. He entered hell, took the keys, and the audacity, 
of our lion. The audacity. He entered hell, conquered. He went here, spoiled principalities. He did not just stop at spoiling the principalities. He like messed them up. He like messed, made an open show like ye ye, did them ye ye. It was beyond doubt that the lion had authority. The lion had capacity. The lion had audacity. The ability of our lion. John chapter 11. John 11 verse 37. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Let's see verse 43 to verse 45. And when he had thus, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. The lion has ability. He has ability. <laughs> you know, in our social media generation, we say he has doings. The lion has doings. He's not lacking in action. He has ability. There is no end to the measure of the things he can do. And that is the lion over us. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That is the lion. You see, we are not serving or we are not following a lion that does not see. That does not speak. That does not hear. And it reminds me of the story of a prophet Elijah and the servants of Baal. You know, he got to a point. Elijah started mocking them. Maybe Baal is sleeping. Maybe he went on an errand. You know, maybe you know he's looking for admission. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But that is not our own lion. Our lion has ability. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Point number three. The liberating lion, he will avenge. Psalm chapter 18, verse 46 to verse 50. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou liftest up me up. Above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the hidden, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and sheweth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. To David and to his seed forevermore. It is God that avenges me. The Bible says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, say it, the Lord. It is God that avenges me. It is God that avenges me. It is God that avenges me. 
It is the lion of the tribe of Judah that avenges me. If you come against me, you are coming against the lion of the tribe of Judah. If you come against me, you are not coming against a mortal man. Oh, if you come against me, you have set yourself in array in battle against the Lord. Because it is God that avenges me. I hail the lion. I hail the lamb. I hail the lion. He is the lion over your life. Come to that consciousness. Come to that consciousness. He is the lion, the lordly lion. He is I. He is the lordly lion. He is the lordly lion. He is the lordly lion over your life. What is that situation? What is that challenge? Who is he? Who is the uncircumcised Philistine? Don't you know that there is one, there is a God that sits in heaven. There is he that sits in heaven that makes the earth his footstool. Are you not aware? Has it not been told unto you? I do not come in my name. I come in the name of the Lord. I hear the lion. I hear I hear the lion. 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 Jeremiah chapter twenty. I see the lion. Kai. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 20 from verse 10 to verse 12. I need you to prepare to pray. Your prayer will be self-paced. Meaning that I may not nudge you to pray. But I'm trusting that you have received a word this morning. I'm trusting that the Lord has brought his counsel unto you. I'm trusting that the Spirit of God has hovered over the face of the deep. I am trusting that you will find encounters in your moments of prayer. Ah, Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say day, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting. Saying, peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him. And we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. And they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. For they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But O oh Lord of hosts. That tryeth the righteous. And seeth the reins and the heart. Let me say thy vengeance upon them. For unto thee have I opened my course. Behold, O oh God, and see, O oh God, many are they that have risen against me. You are praying now. You are praying. Let us rise. You are praying. You are praying. I see the Ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I hear the lion. I'm going to allow you to pray. I'm going to allow you to pray. I see, I see, I see the 
It is up to you to determine who you want on your side. It is up to you to now. To all Israel, all Israel, hear ye the word of the Lord. To see this day whom you will serve. Choose you, choose you this day. I have presented before you the lion of the tribe of Judah. And what I put to you is choose you this day whom you will serve. If bow be God, then serve him. If bow be God, then serve him. But if you trust the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, it, oh my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, who do you want on your side? Who would you rather have? Who would you rather have? Who do, would you rather have? Maybe, maybe uh, you have consulted Ashtaroth. Uh, maybe uh, you have gone seeking uh, the courts uh, of the Philistines. Uh, but I have come to announce uh, that there is still a God. Uh, there is still a God. Uh, and he sits in heaven. He is called the Lion. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thou that answers prayers. Are you on? Who do you want on your side? Who would you rather run to? Oh. Maybe you have an option. Maybe you have an alternative. Maybe you have an option. Maybe you have an option. But this prayer is for those that are at your death bed. Lord, whom shall we go to? To whom shall we return? Jesus, Jesus. 
King of Kings. Jesus, Lord of Lords. Yes, you reign. Yes, you reign. Jesus, King of Kings. The lion, the lion, the lion. The lion, the lion, the lion. The lion, I go with the lion. Yes, you I go with the lion. I walk with the lion. I move with the lion. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, oh my God, yes, 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 yes. Jesus, Jesus, oh yes, yes. Yes, you reign. Yes, you reign. Your name is ever great. Great. You are the wisdom before time began. I see his angels ascending everywhere. I see the spirit moving things again. Oh, hallelujah! So the Lord, yeah, 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 yeah. Avenge me, avenge me. Hallelujah. Sit the love upon the throne. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel. Oh. Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel. Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel.
Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Your prayers are answered in the mighty name.